In the movie Jaws, the character Quint famously recounts his experience being on a warship in World War II that was torpedoed by the Japanese, resulting in he and his shipmates being stranded in the ocean while sharks slowly picked them off. The story is in fact based on an actual event. In July 1945, the USS Indianapolis had completed a top secret mission that involved delivering the enriched uranium for Little Boy, the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima the following month. Having completed that mission, the ship then headed towards the Philippines and just after midnight on the 30th of July, it was hit by two missiles fired from a Japanese submarine. The hit split the ship into three parts and within 12 minutes it had sunk taking around 300 of its crew with it, leaving around 900 adrift in the water. Due to the short amount of time between the attack and the sinking, a lot of the men in the water had no life jackets so they had to cling to the various bits of wreckage. Some were severely burned from explosions, some had broken bones and cuts, most were covered with fuel and oil let loose in the water as the ship broke up. This all happened in the black of night and just when all those things seemed bad enough, the dawn brought a horrific new threat. Sharks. As one of the survivors, Corporal Edgar Harrell relates, At any given time, you could look out and see a big fin cutting through the water. It isn't long until you see a straggler out there thrashing around in the water. Then you hear a blood-curdling scream and you look and see that life jacket go under. And then, like a fish cork, that life jacket brings the body back to the surface. When it does, then it's blood, blood, blood. Shark, shark, shark and you dare not go and check who your buddy might have been. This was repeated time and again over the ensuing days. They were either scorched by the sun or slowly picked off by the sharks. All that, in conjunction with the lack of food and water, drove some of the men crazy. Harold, mentioned earlier, was initially in a group of around 80 men hanging on together. And over the ensuing couple of days, this number dwindled to 17. And then four days after the attack, Harold found himself alone with his shipmate floating in the open sea. Due to the top secret nature of their mission, rescue was slow coming and it was only by chance that the survivors were spotted. A Navy pilot trying to fix his rear antenna just happened to look down while trying to make the repair and saw the oil in the water. Thinking it was a Japanese submarine, his plane swung around to make a bombing run, and that was when they saw the men in the water, the wreckage, and the hordes of sharks. The rescue call went out, and one of the first planes out was tasked with dropping rafts to the stranded. As the pilot flew low over the area, he saw the sharks attacking the survivors, and instead of dropping the rescue rafts, disobeyed orders and landed. 56 men were jammed into the plane and even strapped to the wings in a desperate attempt to get them to safety. Ships then arrived in the evening and the next day, at which point the rest of the survivors were saved. Of the 1,196 servicemen who had been on the ship when it was torpedoed, only 317 lived to tell the tale. It was the largest loss of life in a single incident in the history of the US Navy, and it remains to this day the worst shark attack in recorded history. 